Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're at Ping headquarters today in Phoenix, Arizona, talking with Marty Jertson. We've got brand new irons to talk about, Marty. I know you're excited about yeah. this one. The G700, and this thing is a distance beast. You nailed it. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Um, so our motivation for this iron was to leverage uh, everything we know about how metal woods flex and behave. Okay. Um, and so the G700 iron has a miraging C300 face, and the face flexes twice as much as a G iron or a G400 iron. Wow. So this is right up to the COR limit. And not only does the face flex a lot, it also what we call loft flexes. So the top rail relaxes and it launches the ball really high. It gives us very unique combination of ball speed, launch angle, and it goes towering in its trajectory, but it's not a high spin iron. Okay. So the whole secret, I guess, the fun part of this iron, it can help the everyday player hit their irons like a tour player. You know, we all see it on TV if we're watching Shot Tracker, or if we go to a PGA Tour event. Tour players hit their irons super high and far. And so that's what this iron will allow the everyday player to now do. So in addition to what you've done with the face, you've also got a hollow body construction, which I think is the first in an iron for you guys? Yes, and uh, we're not inhibiting the face flexing in any way. So it is completely hollow on the inside, um, and that allows the face to move, and the perimeter transition areas are also very thin. Okay. And so when we look at our simulations of the face, uh, the ball hitting the club face in our finite element, how we kind of simulate how much flexing is going to be in the face, it is amazing. The entire face is just red hot with ball speed. Wow. Uh, when we put it on our Pingman uh, robot and we hit it around the face, the ball speed is up uh, one and a half to two miles an hour everywhere on the face. Wow. So it's hot no matter where you hit it. So. Uh, that also helps us get an extremely high inertia iron. The inertia on this iron is about 10% higher uh, than our G400 or G series iron. Okay, and is that the, the hollow body allows you to sort of push weight to the perimeter? Is that what's enabling yeah. that? Yeah, the hollow body, the thin face, and then you see we have a, a, a toe weight that's counterbalanced perfectly with a weight in the hosel. So the CGs are still perfectly in the center. Um, which is right where you want to hit it. But that, through that combination, that's what boosts the inertia really high on this iron. And again, you know, as is the case with the, was the case with the G and is the case with the G400, you see some mass here, you see a little bit of thicker sole, there's some offset on this iron. But in the playing position, it's still got a nice, clean shape to it. Yeah, it's clean. There's definitely no sense of bulkiness or oversize to it. It's, it's uh, an iron that's meant for game enjoyment, so it has a little bit of our kind of tour style shaping like the G400 does. Mm -hmm. um, and so players have really enjoyed uh, the look of this uh, at a dress. Even though it looks friendly, it doesn't look too big or it doesn't look intimidating. Yeah, and I know the one thing, you, you don't want this club sort of like categorized as a super game improvement club because it's more than just that. It's going to fit a wider array of players. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is just a great product if you're looking for, there's a lot of distance irons, but if you're looking for to get more distance and what that helps with is for the ability for you to hit one, one or two less clubs into the green. And that's a really big deal. Ball speed jumped up to 113. So another mile an hour faster. All those numbers are just good as far as a good comparison. Ball speed's up, launch speed is up. And the other thing I want to briefly touch on before we wrap up is a lot of distance irons, they generate distance, but there's a complete sacrifice in terms of feel. Mm. And you guys have done an incredible job with G400 across your iron line and here as well of taking an iron that's going to produce massive ball speed, massive yardage, but doesn't feel like you're hitting bricks. Uh, yeah. How, how do you sort of accomplish that in an iron like this? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we have a lot of tools at our disposal now. Uh, so we have uh, computer simulations, we can see where uh, different sounds components of the iron are coming from and we can stabilize those areas, we can change thickness in those areas. And so it starts with just a fundamental understanding of what is good sound, what is desirable. And then how do we, we can measure it with microphones at, you know, out on the range. Mm -hmm. How do we do that, incorporate that in the design process through a lot of virtual tools that give us the ability to kind of predict what the sound's going to be and how do we optimize it. 
Outstanding. Marty, great looking irons. We appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be fun.